he was arguing that how was Jonah in the belly of the whale? He was alive. How was Jesus in the belly of the whale? Dead. So who's telling the truth? Says Ahmed Didat. See, I suppose in some ways that um, interpretation is plausible, but look at it very carefully. Is that the only explanation that you can derive from the text? I don't think so. For example, peace in submission to God. <coughs> if you were, uh, I'm in my room and you are in your room. If I said, if I said, okay, we're both in our rooms, and I said, uh, peace in submitting to God, just as I am in my room, so is peace in submitting to God is in his room. When I say that, am I claiming that you are in your room as I am in my room, provided that you are doing exactly every single thing that I am doing in my room. If I were standing, you'd be standing. If I were sitting, you'd be sitting. If I were peeing, you'd be peeing at, at the same exact time also. It, 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 am I making that claim? No. No. You see, that verse is talking about the location not about the exact details of being in the location. Do you see now? Peace in submitting to God. So the contention is very, very feeble. The contention that is being put forward by you is very, very feeble in an actual fact okay <laughs> so anyway thank you for your kind attention and with that I relinquish the mic I think um, we're gonna pass it over no English Knight has his hand up so I'm gonna pass it over to him and then God's Aussie will come up after him yes um, so English Knight it's your mic thank you and the his history of humanity faithful 777 okay and yes, he is indeed our Lord and Saviour, <coughs> as John 3.16 clearly says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever shall believe in him shall have eternal life. Who? Faithful? Uh, Ibn Maryam. That's who. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the biggest historical error that the Quran commits is in denying <coughs> um, the crucifixion. If in fact the crucifixion is be is denied in chapter number four of the Quran, we know that historically Jesus was indeed crucified. The evidence is overwhelming. Even the most skeptical of scholars accept it has a historical certainty as Robert Funk from the Jesus Seminar has said that if there is one thing that we know <coughs> and he is a ver he is what is described <coughs> as a hyper skeptical historian and he says if there is but one thing that is certain about Jesus it is that he was crucified okay but Christian guide um actually second Thessalonians <coughs> second in the Shahada that they say Il, uh, Muham, uh, uh, that the Prophet Muhammad they call him Prophet Muhammad um, messenger of Allah <coughs> <coughs> that to me is not really much of a point of contention what is a point of contention would be um, the fact that um, Muslims accuse Catholics of worshipping Mary because <coughs> Catholics sought intercession with her. Intercession then is compared to worship by um, Sword of Truth and others. If that is the case, then in Sahih Hadith, um, in the Hadith of Malik Adar, 
we have one of the great companions of the Prophet, uh, Bilal ibn Harith. He is identified as, as such by one of the great muhaddithin, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, in Fathul Bari. And he went to the grave of the Prophet. He went to the grave of the Prophet. This was after the death of the Prophet, during the time of the Khilafah of Uthman. Sorry, Omar, not Uthman, Omar. And then he said, in front of the grave of the Prophet Muhammad, he said, Ya Muhammad, pray for rain for us. Because there is a terrible drought, your people are suffering, pray for rain for us. Is that worship? Is that worship? Uh, if that is worship, then they do indeed worship the Prophet Muhammad. They accuse Catholics of worshipping Mary and the saints because um, Catholics have statues of Mary and pictures and frescoes of the saints in their churches. Why do Muslims have the name of Muhammad next to the name of Allah in the mosques? If you, if you ever been to a mosque, if you go to a mosque, usually what they have um, in front is the name of Allah and on the side Beside the name Allah, you have the name Muhammad. And of course, they bow down in that direction. Shall we then conclude that the Muslims uh, worship Muhammad? <laughs> that out, man. I was busting at the seam. I don't know what it is. Next to the mic. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, yes, uh, the, the Quran the Quran describes um, Allah as makar. Makar means deceptive. Makar means deceptive. Yes. <clears throat> but um, regarding errors in the Bible, well, I'm not. Um, uh, some, uh, I'm not uh, the type of person that believes in inerrancy. <clears throat> um, my way of thinking is, I suppose, um, quite similar to Father Professor Emily Brown's <coughs> way of thinking. And I don't see how <coughs> uh, there are in the Bible discredit um, the, the truths that can be ascertained from the Bible such as the crucifixion of Jesus, such as the fact that the earliest followers of um, Jesus did indeed perceive him as God. All of this can be ascertained from um, the collated information of scripture, texts of scripture. Yes, a uh, man of understanding, he, um, employing higher criticism, which um, Christian scholars like Father Emily Brown has done, does not at all negate the truths of Christianity. I don't think it does. And I have no problem at all recognizing certain difficulties in scripture. But the problem with Muslims is that they will never admit even the tiniest bit of difficulty in the Quran. According to them, the Quran is absolutely perfect. Islam is shumul. It is not possible to have even one small bit of difficulty and this is how Islam is self-defeating do you see this is how Islam is self-defeating because they are they approach their religion in such a way as if it is so perfect as if it is so impenetrable invincible that if you can show just one mistake the whole thing crumbles the whole thing crumbles if you can but show one mistake. And so, this is what did it for me. One mistake is sufficient to, um, well, bring down the entire building, the un entire structure. And that mistake is with the crucifixion. That mistake is with the crucifixion. That mistake that the Quran 
commit the crucifixion. The crucifixion, without a shadow of a doubt, certainly did take place. If you deny the crucifixion, you might as well deny Muhammad, you might as well deny the companions of Islam, you might as well deny everything in history. Because if you deny the crucifixion, there is no history. Because the crucifixion is one of the most well attested ancient events in the history of mankind. Takdimon, it's your mic. Counter evidence to the historicity of the crucifixion. Thus far, nobody has <coughs> come forward to provide any counter evidence. Hmm. Very sad, I think. Jabir is Muslim. The inaccuracy of the Quran is in its claim that there was no crucifixion. You like democracy, don't you, Farouk? You like democracy, don't you, Farouk? I want you to give me one name. <coughs> one name of a notable historian who says, and is not a Muslim, okay? Who says that the crucifixion did not happen. One notable historian, don't give me G. A. Wells. Don't give me Papa. I want a notable because we're dealing with uh, authoritative scholars like historians. Name us one historian who says that the crucifixion did not happen. Just one. Farouk, if you can. Because I can give you hundreds of names of historians who say that it did happen. It did happen. Let us see if you are consistent in your methodology. <laughs> yes, hundreds, Farouk. <laughs> oh, you want a thousand? Okay, I'll give you a few now. Lord, uh, uh, Lord uh, Gertman, Ludeman, Gerd Ludeman, uh, Robert Funk, uh, Bart Ehrman, Bruce Metzger, <clears throat> um, Helmut Costa, Raymond E. Brown, more? <coughs> Price, thank you. Uh, John Dominic Crossan, Marcus Borg. <laughs> Do you want more names? <laughs> So we're going to wait for a name from Farouk. We're going to wait for a name from Farouk because he likes um, an authority. So we want an authoritative individual historian and uh, that name, the person who denying the crucifixion, saying that the crucifixion is not historical. We'd like one individual and let us see if Farouk can live up to his uh, yardstick. Anyway, I think my time is up. To take the mic. Oh my goodness, we have disciple of the church. It's your mic. Assalamu alaikum. Hayakala here, Kanzler. It's your mic, disciple of the church. Thank you, Wattoha. Fair as always. <clears throat> and I commend you for that. <clears throat> uh, Farouk, really, it does not mean king, sovereign, one who wields power, really. Okay, I have here Ma'riful Quran, volume number three, page number 60, 49. Page number 49. 